Hill this day. Those of you who are online or watching us later on our YouTube channel, we're glad that you joined us as well. Um, how many are taking naps this afternoon? <laughs> I bet you even everybody. Um, thanks for making it here with Daylight Savings Time. Uh, I remember in the old days before they changed the time, it usually ended up right on Palm Sunday or Easter, and people would show up on the last hymn on Easter, and it was just horrible. So at least it's a little earlier this year. Uh, several announcements, important ones to make. Uh, take a look at your bulletin insert, if you would. Uh, first of all, what's not written there is this is the last Sunday that Vivian Zerger will be selling Girl Scout cookies in the Fellowship Hall. So uh, please drop by after the service and uh, help support this wonderful occasion. And by the way, um, Pat Valencia is wearing an interesting hat. Do you want to explain that for us? Fifty-four years registered Girl Scout. Where's her pin? You remind us that of every every year, and I'm so glad you do. Thank you. Um, and also, while you're in there, the Easter cards there in the fellowship hall that will be sent out in uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, please sign those for our shut-ins. We would appreciate that also very much. The uh, coming up Thursday, March 21st. Mark your calendar for the first time in several years. We are going to uh, reinitiate the, uh, what we call the Luncheon Club that will meet the third Thursday of every month. Um, since we haven't done this in a long time, it would be a, uh, helpful to have a good idea of who might be able to attend. There is a sign-up sheet that's on the door that goes into the kitchen through the Fellowship Hall uh, if you would like to, to sign up for that. And we'll have more information exactly how that's going to work uh, in the coming weeks. It's interesting that the next four announcements all have to do with Sunday, March 24th, which happens to be Palm Sunday. You'll see information there about the one great hour of sharing collection that we will be taking. Uh, we'll have an insert and I'll do more explanation about where that money goes. And this congregation has always been very generous and we are very thankful for helping with that offering. Um, there will also be our special Palm Sunday uh, processional, but I see here uh, that they're asking for the children to come at 1045. They're going to have some costumes this year as well as palms to wave. And uh, I, as always, we will be led by a donkey and we'll see who gets that this year. And uh, also that same day, we are going to have a potluck luncheon on Palm Sunday. and. Uh, during and a little bit after that, uh, pot, that potluck, 
uh, the Reverend Elaine Hedgecock will be leading a communion workshop to help explain from a faith development standpoint of children uh, an understanding of communion. So you are welcome for that as well. And also Easter Lily Forms are in the narthex. Please check those out as well. And you'll see there a list of our Holy Week services. Again, a lot more information to come. And with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to this morning's prayer. Every time I think about Jesus, surely he died on Calvary. Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Surely he died on Calvary. Mm -hmm. Please rise in body or spirit for the invitation to worship. On our worst days, God is good. On our God best is days, God, God is good. good. When life is, is consistent, God is good. And when life turns on its head, God is good. Day and night, Monday through Sunday, God is good. God, God is here. God is love. 
Hold tight to that good news. Let us worship God. scripture today when Jesus turns to Peter, named the rock of the church, and says, get behind me, Satan. That had to be hard for Peter. It's a pretty bad day when Jesus calls you Satan. Fortunately, this strange moment comforts us with the knowledge that even Peter made mistakes. Peter, who was given the keys to the kingdom or kingdom, made mistakes just like us. And still, Jesus chose him. Knowing that, let us speak honestly with God. For even on our worst days, we belong to God, and that will never change. Join me in prayer. Loving God, we often find ourselves moving through a world that does not make sense. Like Peter, we want to yell out, that should not happen. We want to control scenarios beyond our reach. We want to hold your world in our hands. Forgive us for the moments when we lead with declarations instead of curiosity. Forgive us for arguing when we should listen. Forgive us for fixating on one truth when we should open ourselves up to many. Soften our hard edges and teach us how to listen. With hope in our hearts, we pray. Hear now our silent prayers of confession and reflection. Friends, no matter how many times we have dug in our heels, no matter how many fights we have wanted to pick with God, no matter how many times we have disagreed, raged, or clung to what we know, instead of embracing holy change, we worship a God of grace. Nothing can separate us from God's love, not even a stubborn attitude or a tense heart. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel God's love for us will always be deeper than we can imagine. We are seen. We are loved. We are forgiven. Amen.
peace before us, peace behind us, peace under our feet. Peace within us, peace over us, let all around us be peace. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I would like to invite the children of the church to please come forward for a few moments of visiting with each other. Hi guys. They're still coming. Okay, let's do the usual. Let's get close together because I got some stuff to show you today. I bet, I'm going to show you something I bet none of you have ever seen before. Oh, you've seen one? Oh. Yeah, of course you have one. I know. Gosh, I, I was teasing. I knew everybody had one. Um, I got a particular program on here today. It's a, a map program. Uh, we, we live right here in Tulsa where that little blue dot is. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to travel to? Okay, pick something in this country. Otherwise the map is going to be really tiny. California? Northeast Regan? What is that? Oh, region. Sorry. Northeast. Oh, that would be like Vermont or something or Boston. Okay, so here we are. And we're going to go all the way up to there. See this? Here we are. We're going to go. What if there's things, before you usually make a trip, what do you do? Don't you somewhat decide, this, but also don't you decide once you're on the road that you want to see certain things? So what do you do? Say we're traveling up there and oh, we want to see something in St. Louis. What do we do? It's not working. <laughs> I'm supposed to be putting a pin in it. Why is this not working? <laughs> it worked this morning. Okay, let's stay in Oak. Huh? Okay, we're gonna make play pretend. Say there's all these other places you want to see before you travel from here to here, and you put a pin in it. And what does a pin look like? Just kind of like a, a little dot. Yes, ma'am. Your grandma lives in Kansas and you go there. Do you stop along the way and see things? Yeah, so what you can do sometimes is you put a pin in it. Well, let's just forget that. <laughs> Have you paid attention at all to the bulletin that we're using through Lent, the bulletin cover? What does that look like to you after what I just said? It looks like a map. Does this look like a map? And what do these points look like? Like put a pin in it? 
their destinations. We travel from here to here to here to here. And what we're talking about in a, in a broader context is not just traveling, we're talking about our faith, what we believe, what we understand. And sometimes we travel a, 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 a very windy road around our path. So that's what is the blow up of that. Have you taken a good look at all of those things? In each of the bulletins, each Sunday, I bet you no one has done this. There is a different pin at the top of your bulletin. Uh, uh, here, here's an easier one. Here was, la here was two weeks ago. What does that look like? Water. Do you remember the story we talked about on water? Jesus and Peter walking on the water. Yeah. Right. Here was one. That, what's this look like? A mountain. And this is was this experience of Peter know, knowing Jesus' identity as the Messiah. So that was like a mountaintop experience, something really important. Uh, yeah, yeah, it could be snow. But this is weird. This is today's. I want to ask the choir and the music people, what does that look like in music? Did you hear what they said? They almost all knew the answer. It's a fermata. Okay, that's it. Thank you for coming. What, here's what a fermata does in music. I got some music here. And here's some notes that just go down. But this note has that funny symbol on top of it. Do you know what a fermata means when you're singing music? What does it mean, choir? Oh. Oh, did, I did not practice this with them. That is scary. It means to hold. So with, well, say without that, we would just go da 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 da. But with a fermata, we would go da 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 until the director went da. So we hold. We hold for a while until we move on. And again, this is what it would look like on a piece of music. Okay? So, why in the world were we talking about this today? It's to hold or to pause. There's some times in your life when you just need to stop. And you need a big fermata. And you just need to, to stop for a while and think, and what, what this meant in the story we're gonna to read today is that even though Peter said Jesus was the Messiah, he misunderstood what it meant to be the Messiah. So Jesus basically put a big formata over Peter and said, hold on a minute. This is what you understand it to be, but here's what I understand Jesus saying it means to be the Messiah. So sometimes we have ideas about what things are we think we know right from wrong always, and sometimes that's right, but sometimes we need to rethink what it is we believe. So sometimes we need to pause and think before we act, okay? So think about formatas. I'm gonna ask you next week if you remember that word, all right? Because I won't, okay, let's pray. Loving God, thank you for symbols in our life, things that point to other things that mean something special to us. On this day, when we uh, looked at this thing called a formata, help us to realize that there are times in our lives where we just need to stop. And we need to rethink maybe some of the things we believe. Um, so just remind us of these things, that there's always more to learn, and that we need to listen to others as well. Bless the children of this church and children everywhere for the gloriousness that they add to our church life and to our own life and life in the world. Bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, you guys. You can head to Worship Connection. And next week, you can show me how to pin my map, okay? I promise not to play with this for the rest of the service. Please join me in prayer. 
listening God, if we could weave your good news together into the fiber of our being, we would. But instead, we wander. We often find ourselves swept up in the business of the day. Like a seesaw of faithfulness, we move back and forth, up and down, constantly trying to find you in the midst of it all. So speak clearly to us now. Quiet the distractions long enough, uh, long enough for us to affix ourselves to your good news. We are listening. We are hungry. We are hopeful. Amen. Today's first scripture reading is a scripture of hope. Not everyone is where they can give expressions of hope, but there is a promise. Here, Psalm 107. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Holy One say so, those God redeemed from trouble and gathered in from lands from east and from west, from north and from south. Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities it endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and God saved them from their distress. God sent out God's word and healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for God's steadfast love, for God's wonderful works to humankind, and let them give offering of thanksgiving and sacrifices, and tell of God's deeds with songs of joy. Amen. Our gospel lesson for this morning comes from the 16th chapter of Matthew. Understanding this passage is very important to know its context. But instead of uh, giving all of that information now, I will do so in the sermon. So here, Matthew 16, 21 to 23. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. 
And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this word. Amen. We've all had bad days. Sometimes we've had really bad days. But try to imagine how bad Peter's day became when Jesus turned and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. Imagine the feeling of being told by Jesus himself that you are a stumbling block to him. Seeing you're setting your mind not on divine things, as in God's plans, but on human things, your plans and preconceived understandings of things. By the way, before we move on, I do want to make a special note that from a Jewish perspective, and remember that Jesus was Jewish, their concept of Satan was not the same that developed later, especially in traditional Western Christianity, including till today. Satan was more of a metaphor rather than a physical being ruling the underworld as a personification of evil. In fact, the word Satan in Hebrew translates as adversary. Indicates that it is a person or one who accuses and hinders or tempts, such as tempting to do evil things. It stands as the inclination to veer off the path of righteousness and faithfulness to God and as that which turns a person away from the ways of God. But a fuller understanding of today's gospel reading only comes on the heels of the immediately preceding passage that we explored last Sunday. You may recall that Peter had a mountaintop revelation in his journey of faith, when in recognizing Jesus' true identity, after Jesus asks, but who do you say that I am? He responds with, you are the Messiah, son of the living God. So Jesus responds by calling him blessed and proclaims, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it. By the way, the Greek name Petra, from which we get the word Peter, the name Peter, literally means rock. And as a geologist, I love that. But that, if that wasn't enough, Jesus then also gives Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Yet in foreshadowing what was to lie ahead in this very next passage of Scripture in the Gospel of Matthew, which, are we, which we are exploring today, I asked Peter, added that Peter's mountaintop experience would be short-lived, stating, for we later learn that Peter's understanding of the mission and the purpose of being the Messiah was not the same as Jesus's. And that's where we pick up today's passage, which begins with Jesus providing a deeper understanding of his identity and especially his mission. Rather than claiming power and victory from his identity as the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus shocks his faithful disciples with the news of his impending suffering and rejection and death. We call that the passion of Jesus. And not surprisingly, Peter found this message deeply disturbing. Why? Because it did not fit with his expectations of what it means to be the Messiah. Peter was so fixed on his own understanding that he rebukes Jesus, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. By the way, the Greek word that is used here for rebuke is the very powerful verb used 
to silence demons. So even though Peter understands that Jesus is the Messiah, he does not understand what it means for Jesus to be the Messiah. In the first century Palestine, a prevailing view was that the Messiah would come and lead a military triumph over the Roman imperial occupiers, thus restoring the majestic kingdom founded by David a thousand years earlier. Jesus, however, counters that nationalistic triumphalism when he describes the true nature of his messiahship. Instead of coming forth in a blaze of glory, swinging swords and riding on chariots, deliverance will come in the form of Jesus' own great suffering, rejection, and death, followed by resurrection. And our Lenten resource material makes the following connection to our own journey of faith when what we believe is challenged. It states, when your world unravels, what, when your world unravels and your beliefs are tested, you may cling to what you know. As Jesus foretells his death and resurrection, Peter protests. Peter is fixed upon the way he thinks things should go, and he resists the pain of what will come. But Jesus is also fixed upon his calling, and therefore calls Peter out. For everyone, every one of us, there comes a time when your faith is tested, and you will have to face difficult and inconvenient truths. We may want to take the easier path, the path with less pain. We may want to cling to easy or simplistic answers. I could provide many. Instead, what does it look like to welcome complexity? Can you stay fixed upon your convictions while also expanding your perspectives? You know, progressive Christianity can partially be defined by that last line, to stay fixed upon your convictions while also expanding your perceptions. So Jesus challenges Peter and us to have an open mind, rather than one that is closed by a sense of certainty and control, and especially when it comes to divine mystery. So growing in our faith, intellectually and spiritually, inherently comes with challenges and complexity. And some of those folks who study such things for what is called faith stage theory call this particular stage in our faith development the deconstruction of our faith. It's kind of a, a liminal in-between time. Doubting what you once believed, but not quite sure yet what to replace it with. And by the way, that basically defines the experience of anyone who has been to seminary. So, Brian McLaren, the former pastor, and now an author, speaker, and leader in what is called the Emerging Church Movement, names four stages of faith. They are Simplicity, complexity, perplexity, finally harmony. And McLaren provides an image of these four stages using the metaphor of the rings of tree growth. But as our faith beliefs change, there is new growth. However, like a tree, each previous ring remains a part of your and my journey of faith. Not everyone, however, adds these different rings throughout their faith development. For instance, McLaren states, there are many forms of Christianity that act as if the only way to be a Christian is in the realm of simplicity, which is dualistic, like this is right and this is wrong. And he continues, and they think that something's wrong with you if you grow beyond that. Well, I'd like for us to explore the particulars of how McLaren defines these stages, but at a later date. 
We did some of that this morning in our adult church school class, and if you'll remember, I sent out an all-church email that has links to the long video that we watched this morning. I encourage you to take a look. And these stages are outlined in McLaren's Enlightening 2021 book, which I also encourage you to buy and read, Faith After Doubt, Why Your Beliefs Stopped Working and What to Do About It. A biblical commentator in our resource material, Dr. Terence Lester, puts it all into perspective this way. As we reflect upon Peter's journey and the challenges of our own faith, let us remember that unraveling can lead to profound growth. Using the tree metaphor, I see that as pruning off dead or unneeded branches to promote new growth. Lester continues, like Peter, we may have to face inconvenient truths and drop our preconceived notions. Jesus' response to Jesus' response to Peter reminds us of the importance of our commitment to God's mission, even when it's difficult. So may we learn from Peter and embrace the transformative power of faith. Well, there's not a person here today or anyone listening or watching online that hasn't come face to face with questioning many of the beliefs with which we grew up. Faith development is not easy. Often based in fear, it's difficult to challenge and to let go of what we think, or perhaps more appropriately, what we were taught, is the right way to believe. And yet, perhaps the most important point I can make in this sermon is this. Know that struggling with your faith beliefs is a healthy, in fact, necessary part of your journey of faith. It certainly was for Peter. And whenever, wherever you are in whatever stage of faith you find yourself is simply a reality of perhaps where you should be at this point in your lifelong journey. And the ability and practice of accepting that we find ourselves and others in different stages, such, for instance, as the approach to biblical interpretation, is a way that we can offer grace to each other here at College Hill and to others who need that grace, like perhaps extended family members or co-workers. In other words, to approximately quote our own John Gammy from a conversation we just had yesterday. He's a lawyer, so he's going to rebut this even if I get one word wrong. Your tree rings, even if in, in an equivalent state as another's, may not be the same. So John asks, can we embrace the diversity of our faith journeys in an accepting and non-judgmental way, thus transcending a hierarchical approach to faith development? That is indeed a gracious way to approach our relationships with one another. And like Peter, know that there will be times when your and my understanding of a life of faith will be challenged. Yet hopefully, not with the rebuke, get behind me, Satan. Amen.
let us join our hearts, minds, spirits, and voices together in the affirmation of faith. We acknowledge a God of second chances, a God who sees through our resistance and holds our fears with tenderness. We acknowledge that this God of second chances uses ordinary people like Peter and us to do good in the world. We acknowledge that from time to time, God invites us to imagine the impossible. We acknowledge that from time to time, God invites us to change our minds. This change is holy and important work, although challenging. When fear and scarcity plague us, or when the possible feels out of reach, we acknowledge that God meets us with grace and invites us to follow. Thanks be to God for a love like that. In gratitude to God, let us gather our pledges and offerings. Collection plates are located just inside the sanctuary doors. You may also mail your donation in to our church or donate on our website or use the QR code on the back of the bulletin. God, we give thanks that notwithstanding our wandering hearts, you love us. You don't stand behind us wagging your finger at our statement of faith. You love us. We ask that our gifts given in love be used to your mission of love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to draw your attention now again to the bulletin insert where you'll see a list of some of the prayer concerns that we are addressing this week. Uh, first, a couple that have been brought to me. Remember that uh, the prayer cards are out in the narthex. You can uh, write a request and they are brought to me to share with all. a few moments of silent prayer.
God of love and grace. We are grateful that you have reminded us this day that a journey of faith is not fixed and it differs from every single person being anywhere along a spectrum of faith development. May we never use that as a way to categorize and judge others because they aren't where, quote, we are. But we, may we also always be on the lookout for what is truly hurtful, hurtful theology or understandings that we may indeed then speak up. We give you thanks that you help us to be a community of faith that seeks to be open and accepting of others wherever they are in their own journey of faith and that you have given us the grace to extend that grace to one another. We pray for those in need this day, for those certainly in in Gaza, in the West Bank, in Israel, all those places throughout the world that are experiencing war and devastation, even genocide. We pray that your presence will be with our leaders, that they may make decisions that help bring about peace and justice. Loving God, we pray for those in physical need those who are recovering from surgeries, those with medical conditions that need healing. We certainly pray for those who are facing toward the end of their life here in this plane before moving on into your eternal presence. We pray this day for Chuck McConville and the extended family and that his Last few hours may be blessed by your presence and your love, knowing he is loved and not alone. And we pray for all those who continue to grieve the loss of loved ones. Help us to be civil. Help us to be the people you have created us to be. Be with this congregation, all congregations throughout our presbytery, our synod, our denomination, we ask all these things in Jesus' name, and now pray together, say, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious hearts on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within you saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. So go now in peace, go trusting the good news, knowing that as you go, God goes before you, behind you, above you, beneath you, beside you, and within you to empower you to live your life to the glory of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer now and forevermore.